team, make no mistake, there is something about working against unmanned aerial systems that can bring about a sense of dread unlike anything else. Ultimately, it's probably rooted in a sense of helplessness is above you, potentially out of eyesight, out of hearing, that there is a mechanical machine working against you that could be armed or not and not knowing is a large sense of that i know when i was deployed i spent quite a bit of time in a bunker uh especially the first few alerts you know uh, buttholes are puckered tight uh after a while you kind of get used to it and you're like the hell with it if it's my time it's my time but this is one of the common questions that I get asked here about working against unmanned aerial systems. And so in this one, that is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to look at the most common platforms that are out there, ranging from civilian to military, the types of sensors used to conduct reconnaissance on these platforms, who uses them and which ones you really need to be concerned about and which ones you don't, as well as tactic tactics techniques and procedures on how to defeat them first up is the sky deal man this is a videographer's dream it's the one that i have and it is impressive to say the least if you can plan it they can fly it features a flight time of 27 minutes it can fly 36 miles an hour and has a ceiling height of 15,000 feet although i have found that it is truly a line of sight system. And you'll spend, you know, it's between 1500 to two grand to get into it. Now the Autel Evo is the next lineup of the civilian ones and it, it runs around $6,000. But it can detect temperature fluctuations, vehicles and individuals and animals using thermal imaging with a 640 by 512 resolution. This thing is badass. Moving up, we have the Delta Quad that can carry a 1.2 kilogram payload. It can fly for 150 kilometers, is fully autonomous, and can fly in the rain and snow. This one's going to set you back around 12,000, but it also features thermal and can fly for over two hours and features a payload drop function as well as the ability to map the Earth. The FreeFly Systems Alta X comes in at $20,000, but can fly with a 22 pound payload. It also provides the ability to map the earth and would be an absolute dream for any cinematographer. Moving on into military grade drones, we have the Scan Eagle. It's small, long durance and low altitude UAV. Its base price is 80000 each, but a full system comes in at $3.2 million. It can fly for over 20 hours and features a custom-designed video system. And it doesn't need an airfield to be deployed. General Atomics delivered the MQ-1 Predator and has provided aerial reconnaissance and forward observation roles, as well as being outfitted with Hellfire missiles. It has seen combat in almost every climb and place. The Predator can fly up to 460 miles, stay on target for 14 hours, and then return to its base. It has a maximum speed of 135 miles an hour, can fly for 24 hours, and has a ceiling height of 25,000 feet. The Predator isn't for everyone though, as it costs roughly 40 million. Not to be outdone, Northrop Grumman developed the RQ-4 Global Hawk, provides a broad overview and systematic surveillance using high-resolution synthetic radar and electro-optical infrared sensors. It can survey more than 40,000 square miles a day. This thing is massive. It's over 47 feet long and has a wingspan of 130 feet. Empty, it weighs nearly 15,000 pounds, but it can fly almost 400 miles for over 34 hours at 60,000 feet. And so there's a lot of drones out there. Some are commercial and some are military. 
But what kind of sensors do they use? Let's break these down. The first and most common is visible light sensors. It's the most cost effective. However, they are easy to defeat. Smaller, inexpensive drones need to fly closer to the earth, allowing them to be heard. So tucking underneath some trees or maintaining some discipline about you is all it takes to defeat these drones. And you'll see in a couple of these other overlays that you can see people turning back. And even in the, the Grunt Proof Survival Games and in the Seer Challenge, drones were absolutely ineffective. Again, you know, drones are noisy as hell. Whether they're taking off next to you or they're lower flying, on the civilian side of the house, you can hear these things. A thousand meters away, you're going to be able to hear these drones moving. And so that gives you the time as a ground operator to take some evasive action. But what about IR? Man, you know, it can be crazy to think about something being able to see you at night. But these active IR sensors you basically use the same thing that our eye does right visible light energy comes in it bounces off and around a few things and gets processed and turned into an image but what most people don't realize is that the majority of the ir sensors that are out there are complete and utter garbage if you're not in close proximity to the target it doesn't do you a lick of good look at this footage from a very common military grade platform of course we're looking at the ground here but this is only to showcase how weak of a detail it provides you even when you're up close to something and so you can imagine the further you are you are away from those sensors the more opportunity you have to take evasive action and again maintaining noise and light discipline is about all it takes and getting behind something that is going to be between you and those sensors whether it's vegetation or terrain i seeing at night is one thing but being able to see heat signatures is quite another FLIR or the forward-looking infrared camera use, utilizes thermographic cameras and senses infrared radiation. These thermal imagers are passive and only sense differences in heat and do not see reflected light. So they aren't affected by headlights, smoke, haze, or dust. And that sounds pretty badass, and it is, but thermal imaging is only really getting started to become quality products, right? The sensors for the longest time were super small. Anymore, uh, the most badass one you're going to find is is 640 by 512 but to put that into perspective what i need you to understand my phone captures images with pixel sizes of over 12 million so what does that mean what does, that means that you don't get the depth and the clarity of detail and if then if there's any movement it becomes extremely difficult for it to be able to capture that and thermal has the same issues as all the other sensors if there's something in between you and those optics you're going to be hidden just hiding behind a bush will hide you out terrain will hide you out you know and and to help showcase this a little bit more we'll look at this next footage and you can see this guy who's ultimately apprehended but as he's running through the field he looks back up at the drone right the drone operator had to fly the drone at a low enough altitude to have the, the clarity and the detail needed to be able to see the subject. So that means that the subject could hear the drone. The next one is multispectral sensors, and they are something altogether different. Primarily used for agriculture, weather forecasting, space-based imaging, they have had some military applications to capture data within a specific wavelength across the electromagnetic spectrum. Because of their design, you can't simply get underneath a tarp or camouflage netting to hide yourself. So that these sensors are only picking up one thing, right? And that's why it's really good in law enforcement agencies looking to go find, you know, big stash of drugs that are being plowed out in the fields because each particular piece of vegetation gives off a different signature. And so they can dial this in, and even though everything looks green, 
these sensors can pick up the differences. Right, so which drones do you need to be concerned about? Ultimately, the most cost-effective ones that are out there the, on the commercial side of the house are not drones that you need to be concerned about. Yes, some of their imaging is awesome, but their ability to, to really pan in and zoom in to provide detail when it's outside of hearing is extremely limited. These drones are better suited for, you know, things like making videos and movies and, and different projects like this. But to actually conduct reconnaissance is difficult because you have to be in close proximity. I don't care what they say. They're all ultimately line of sight systems that you're not going to fly across to another county. You're only, only going to get so long of a flight time anyways. And again, you can hear these things. And in order to get detail, operators have to fly them nice and low in order to get those details which means you can hear them which means that you have time and opportunity to evade against them regardless of the sensor that is being used on the other side of the house with the more expensive drones you know do you need to be concerned about these well if you do you're probably in the wrong business because that means that you're working against a state right you're look, working against a government an agency that is absolutely large and if that's a, if that's the business that you're in then uh, you probably need to rethink your business now that being said even these big platforms whether they're you know drone based systems or whether they're working up higher in the sky like balloons or even further up in satellites you know, there's a lot of things to consider when being able to work against them. So let's break this down. Consider the challenges from the adversarial point of view. One of the first things to consider is that there are a number of conditions that must exist simultaneously in order for effective intelligence gathering. Got to get away from the X. Remember where you are. Remember that you have a job to do to survive. While working through non-permissive environments, it is all too apparent that scouting reconnaissance, tracking, as well as evading, is literally like hunting for a needle in a haystack. Every decision must be weighed with the cost of making it as you consider your adversary's most likely course of action. The terrain, weather, vegetation, angle of view, light data, and more all directly impact the ability to detect movement while avoiding detection. For the assisted operator, it becomes even more challenging. Unmanned operations are extremely complex and costly and are more often than not beyond the reach of non-state or large government and private sector institutions. The adversary must first possess the assets, have competent operators, dedicate the time, resources, and allocations, and face the challenges of poor sensor resolution. The systems feed raw data, but it is the system operator that must interpret it into an intelligence worth actioning against. The timing, location, and angles are even harder to align as these systems are often moving quickly in high altitude, resulting in analysts having much less time to observe activity or suspicious anomalies that require attention. Then there exists the operational requirement to be conducting reconnaissance operations in the first place without a need for or when faced with the astronomical costs associated with operating and maintaining these multi-billion dollar systems. Governments and private institutions are faced with the decision to utilize lower cost solutions which also face the same challenges of having the major variables align. The following techniques and tactics are consistent regardless of the platform, though there may be additional resources needed to defeat specific systems and sensors. There are eight essential techniques you need to employ and be proficient in, in order to remain undetected while conducting movement, establishing observation posts, setting patrol bases, or larger staging areas. The first one is to disperse into small elements and then displace as often as possible, depending on the size and shape of your operation, as well as the task and purpose. This may mean organizing into small teams 
or individual cells. You need to find a concealed site and conform to your terrain. While securing your hide site, remember that natural foliage will defeat multispectral systems more effectively. However, in the event that you're working to defeat ground operations, you should use care when selecting the foliage so as not to pull too much from a single source. And always remember to reassess and continue to improve. When considering terrain for the purpose of defeating enemy observation, look at the size, shape, slope, elevation, and orientation, as well as natural and man-made features that you and your adversary are operating from while planning. Utilize nighttime operations to the greatest extent possible. Night vision devices and FLIR are fairly cost effective and employed by a number of agencies. So while you can't work at night assuming that you cannot be seen, you also need to combine this technique with others in order to reduce risk to your mission. It goes without saying, but everything needs to be properly camouflaged. You need to blend into your surroundings to the greatest extent possible. Again, plan for the type of systems you are working to defeat and consider both light and noise. Minimize all unnecessary movement. If something doesn't have to move, then don't move it. In this technique, radio traffic is also included. A trained operator can easily triangulate your position if you don't maintain discipline. As part of your priorities of work, you need to employ LPs and OPs to the greatest extent possible to secure your location and movement. If you're not looking, someone is looking at you. You need to plan to work under unmanned and manned systems. Do not take for granted that resources have not been allocated towards your operation. Finally, always inspect your signature using all available sensors from the enemy's point of view in order to improve your position. As a word of caution, know that it may be impossible to avoid all detection, especially when working against advanced systems. What is being released now as unclassified information is literally decades old and commercial platforms are becoming more and more economical. But with careful planning and strategic thinking, you can find ways to operate even in the most contested of environments. So team, I hope you enjoyed the content of this one. If you did, make sure you like it. Share it out with a friend or bow buddy as well. Make sure you leave some comments down below so we can continue to keep this conversation rolling. As always, until then, you stay out there, you keep grinding, and you stay stoked. craft develop your tactical virtue make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell so that you can stay up to date on future content consider becoming a channel member it's going to give you exclusive access to content not available to anybody else i appreciate you guys until then you stay out there you keep grinding and you stay stoked